This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. The U.S. President Theodore Roosevelt, who had traveled all over the world, once called Yosemite the most beautiful place on earth. And it is here at the gateway to Yosemite that I am making this worldwide radio broadcast in our studios of the Spiritual Renaissance Institute in California. Here you will find the largest exposed crystal of rock on this planet, El Capitan, rising over 3,000 feet from the valley floor. Yosemite Falls, plummeting 2,425 feet in a crashing cascade of white water. And the largest of all living things on this planet, the giant sequoia trees, thousands of years old and still growing. 500 million years ago, all of this lay beneath an ancient sea. Then molten granite rose and was carved by huge glaciers into the spectacular topography of Half Dome, Glacier Point, Cathedral Rock, Vernal Falls, towering cliffs and massive monoliths of stone rising in sheer walls on every side. It is an experience of breathtaking beauty. It's why we've established our headquarters here, to walk among natural granite monuments carved hundreds of millions of years ago and among trees which were young seedlings and saplings nearly 3,000 years ago and are still alive today. Gives one a sense of perspective and history and meanings and values which I have found no other place on this earth. And it brings vividly to mind the brevity of human life to stand before a tree which was over 700 years old when Christ was born and is still alive today somehow imparts a new understanding of time and its passage. We are here such a very short while. We live our biblical threescore years and ten, our 70 summers or so, and then we are gone. So brief a time compared to these ancient trees and mountains, and it brings to the thoughtful mind one inexorably inescapable question. What am I doing with my brief time on this pirouetting planet Earth? Your life is composed of two essential elements, time and energy. Your genetics, your physical health and lifestyle determine in large measure the amount of time and energy you will have during your years on this Earth. But how are you using these twofold gifts of God, your time and your energy, how are you spending your time and expending your energy? Have you found some great purpose in your life, some mighty aspiration, a magnificent obsession, as some have called it, some priority purpose, some master motivation which sets your soul on fire with desire, with the burning yearning to achieve something truly important, something of singular significance, a cause greater than yourself, a life work larger than yourself, a shining vision higher than the lesser things of life, an aspiration anointed with the will of the deity, some part of the purpose of God. You will never be fully alive until you find it. And once you find it, you will never die. Your body may perish in time, but your soul shall soar to eternity. I know such a purpose may be found, for I, in my praying, have found it, a purpose more timeless than trees thousands of years old, an aspiration more enduring than these mountains, cliffs, and valleys, a reason for living that is older than the glaciers that carved Yosemite, a purpose born even before the earth and the sun and the moon and the stars and the constellations and the galaxies and spiral nebulae and luminescent universes slowly turning through the eons of eternity. That great purpose is the living will of the living God, the eternal will of the eternal God, and you yourself can find that for yourself. God loves you and has tremendous plans and purposes for your life. You are no mere accident any more than the intricate design of the atom is an accident, or the stately grandeur of the solar system is an accident. God has a will for your life, which is the greatest conceivable good for your life. God's will is love, receiving the infinite love of God for you and loving God and every other person in return. God's will for you is total goodness, compassion, mercy, forgiveness, truth, 
beauty and righteousness, the service and the serenity of knowing that you are a son or daughter of God and a brother or sister to every other person on this planet and every other being in this cosmos, an infinitely valuable member in the worldwide universal family of God. Dare to claim that truth by living faith in this moment, and all things will become new for you, and you will discover the real reason you were born and your eternal purpose for time and for eternity. The finding and knowing of God are the supreme delights of mortal life, and these vital experiences are yours for the having and yours for the taking, if you will. The finding of God is as immediately available as your next breath of air. And if you desire to find this experience, you can have it, and it will totally transform your life. You may have spent years of your lifetime in the pain of purposeless existence, wondering who you really are, where you came from, and where you're going. Is there some real rational reason for your being on this whirling clod of clay called planet Earth? Is it all merely a mad mockery, a senseless charade, a meaningless montage of unrelated events going nowhere and leading to nothing? Is that all life is for you? The philosopher Henry David Thoreau declared the mass of men lead lives of quiet desperation. And what of you? Is life a daily succession of wasted days and wasted nights? Have you found a reason? Yet, for being alive, if you have not, if you have not, you can. Because the creator of this universe, the creator of you, has a plan for this universe and has a plan for you. There is a plan and purpose for your existence on this earth, and you can find it if you will seek for it. But you must dare to seek. You must want it. With all of your heart and your soul, your human life can be transformed from a frustrating experience of not knowing your life purpose and meaning to a transforming realization of your real purpose in being alive. There's a proverb, it's always darkest, just before the dawn. If you have ever experienced that, you know precisely what it means. I remember going fishing back in Kansas with my grandfather. We would rise at perhaps four o'clock in the morning at our cabin at Lake Cahola and would sit on the fishing dock or in the rowboat looking out over the silent black waters of the lake and the sky darker than midnight. Then the faintest light would begin to illumine the eastern sky and the luminescence would grow and glow ever brighter and whiter until the first red and orange glimmerings of the sun lay on the horizon like a coal of fire on the hearthstone of the earth and the sky was caught ablaze with the sunrise of new day. From deep darkness to red, beautiful dawn light, all in a mere matter of minutes. And that is what can happen in your life. You can go from what the ancient writers called the dark night of the soul, the discouragement and defeat of a life lost in aimlessness and sin, of a life torn by trouble and tribulation, to the dawning of a new day of bright hope and wonderful possibilities and adventures. The morning dawning of the sun does not, of course, create instantaneous high noon. Only the passage of time can bring the full light of day to the planet and spiritual growth is similarly a process of ever-expanding illumination through the successive days and decades of your life. But it must have its beginning, this marvelous moment of a new birth, of hope for a new life of faith, this spiritual sunrise in your soul, when the black curtains of dark despair are first pierced by the radiant rays of a new vision, a new consciousness, a new understanding of new possibilities and potentials for a new life for you. And whether you be young or old, that can begin for you right here and right now if you will seek it with all of your heart. God loves you with a love that can light up your life. And there can dawn within your soul a new day of truth and beauty and goodness. There can dawn within your heart a new morning of refreshing hope and rejuvenating exhilaration. The wonderful beginning of a new and glorious future awaits you 
this very moment. It can all begin for you here and now if you will have it so, just as the pre-dawn darkness of early morning can be turned into the splendor of sunrise. And if you hadn't seen it a thousand times, would you believe such a thing would be possible? If you weren't accustomed to the dawning of the sun, would you not think it the most amazing and startlingly beautiful phenomenon you had ever beheld? Every sunrise is a miracle. It's just that people have become so accustomed to it that they take it for granted. Yet in thousands of lives on this planet every year, there occurs the sunrise of the soul, the passage from darkness into light as people seek and find the living God. And so may it be with you. There can dawn within your life a new consciousness of God, a new joy in living, a new purpose in being alive. Your consciousness can pass from darkness into light, from the wrong to the right, from despair to hope, from discouragement to enthusiasm, from misery to joy. God can transform the way you think and feel, act and react. All of life can become new for you in your soul and within your heart. Simply give your life to God. May there dawn a great new day for you in your soul and your heart as you give your life utterly, this moment to God, your Heavenly Father, who loves you so and who wants every good thing for your life and your future. And by faith, it can begin for you right here, right now, this very moment. And then write to us, will you, at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute. The mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. We want to hear from you. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, all this literature, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation. When you write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that address, Box 3080 Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.